Okay. So the non-dual contemplation, the non-duality, is about peace and happiness. What we truly are, our true nature is this peace and happiness. A piece of being that uh, does not depend on any situation, it does not depend on any experience. It does not depend on any relationship. what we truly are. So we invite ourselves to this peace, resting in this recognition, the recognition of that which is not subject to thinking or feeling. So we can turn our attention to the breath, gentle movement of what we call breath. very subtle vibration within the body. Whatever thoughts or sensations may arise, all is well, it's okay. No need to be thought free, no need to fix the thoughts that are arising. And, and a welcoming sort of inviting whatever is arising to its full expression. So we say yes and we remain as that yes, gently, lovingly, yes to whatever is arising, all is well, it's okay, no problem. No intention to gain anything to maintain anything or to achieve anything or to realize anything. No need to burden ourselves with such things. And if an intention arises to get somewhere, to get something, may arise as a feeling or as a thought, 
that is also welcome. It's okay to allow it to be, to allow it to express itself as it wishes. Welcoming is, a, is love. It has no intention, no goal. And it makes no distinction between whatever it is welcoming. Everything is welcomed equally. And I am this welcoming. I is welcoming, I equal welcoming. Welcoming is what I am. It's not a personal welcoming, it's just welcoming. It has no limits, no conditions, no, there is no gate. The open, space of welcoming, a welcoming space of presence. And in, in this welco welcoming, there, there is no division. There is no good and bad. There is no Gatekeeper. The attention is free to roam wherever it chooses to roam. Like a wild horses in the prairie running or resting whichever way their whim takes them If an image arises, an image about me, a memory from the past, that may be judgmental or may have some regret in it, to allow it to be, not to engage in any argument with it. No need to fix it, no need to fix anything. You remain as you are, as this aware presence, the peace of being. That doesn't belong to anybody, which is so beautiful. It's not my peace or my awareness, it's just has no owner. We welcome ourself as this aware presence. We are this welcoming, I am this welcoming, welcoming myself as that. As the one self, one presence. Notice whatever sensations there are in your body. You can turn your attention to your body. Maybe your neck. Your shoulders.
noticing, simply noticing. And noticing that is gentle and sweet. Inviting whatever, whatever is being noticed. to relax as itself, whatever that means. You don't need to understand it. Just invite it to relax as itself. The entire non-dual contemplation is about peace and happiness. Our true nature is that peace and happiness. It's not a personal peace or a personal happiness. There is no limitation, there are no borders around peace and happiness. Peace and happiness do not depend on any experience. Whatever experiences you had are perfect and fine as they are. You don't need to hold on to anything to be what you are. You already are that peace and happiness. You sort of relax your being into itself. You don't need to remember anything. You don't need to gain anything. You don't need to define yourself. Whatever you define is not what you are. It's just a definition, a mentation. the reality of being which we refer to as I is beyond definition, beyond formulation because formulation is limited and I is limitless, has no borders I awareness, I aware presence. So you recognize yourself as that, recognize yourself as I, it's borderless aware presence. A gentle, sweet recognition.
that is not trying to get somewhere, to attain anything. So if you have any questions, anything that you would like to discuss, um, you're welcome to write your question in the chat box or speak your question or your comment. You may need to unmute yourself. Hi, this is George. Hello, George. I don't have a question. Mm -hmm. I just have a comment. Mm -hmm. My comment is that I would really like to thank you so much for these sessions. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, George. Maggie, this is Joe. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I do. I wonder if this unconditional, all pervasive peace and happiness includes <clears throat> sorrow and sadness and anger and disappointment and frustration. Yes, that, that's my question. You know, the, uh, the ocean includes all the currents that arise within it, includes all the waves that arise within it. In the non-dual teaching, in the contemplation of our true nature, there is a uh, understanding of the of understanding about suffering, about ignorance. There's an understanding about our true nature that is, that sheds light onto the veils and the shadows. And it is like when you are imagining 
that there is somebody who is uh, breaking into your car uh, and your car is in the parking lot, you get very troubled and, and you run out to the parking lot and you may find that there is nothing happening to your car. So you may realize at that moment that all the feelings that you had about what's happening to your car were just as a result of some uh, misunderstanding or some ideas or thoughts that cross your mind. Maybe a better metaphor is when you look out your window and you see somebody hiding behind a bush, you get afraid that there is a bandit that wants to cause you harm. And you, so you hide, you, you close your shutters and you hide in your house and you call the police to help you. But when they come, you find that it was just a shadow. There was a shadow of the bush. There was nobody hiding behind, behind the bush. So there is an understanding about unhappiness. We all know uh, unhappiness. We all know jealousy, anger, envy, fear, concern, depression, worries, the negative emotions. We all know them. We all experience them. There are waves within the ocean, but it's not sufficient to understand that consciousness is all inclusive. It includes all of that. It's uh, more significant to understand the process that is maintaining the negative emotions. The separate self, the me, the bubble of identification that is operating in our life, in our thinking and in our feeling to sort of see it, it's happening in our life, it's happened on a, maybe on a daily basis for many of us, to sort of notice it and to see it and to inquire into it. Am I what I believe or what I feel I am? Am I this personal self that I feel and I imagine that I am? Am I this body, whatever way I define it, whichever way I image it? Am I this body mind that I perceive that I am experiencing it? Am I that which, I'm, which I experience? What am I truly? So there is this contemplation that reveals to you what you truly are. And so although there is one reality, one ocean, and the ocean includes all the currents and all the waves within it, the uh, non-dual contemplation is about the realization of your true nature and to come to the uh, full uh, uh, living, uh, a re revelation of the causeless peace and happiness that the ocean is. In other words, it is not sufficient to understand that, yes, everything is consciousness. It is important, more, more significant, to come to that live, living realization of that. Because it is the live, living realization that all is consciousness, that consciousness is infinite and absolute, that reveals 
your ocean hood. You follow Joe? Yes, uh, I'm following you. That's very good. That's a good start. Okay. Sometimes we are, sometimes not you speaking generically, we are satisfied with the understanding that everything is consciousness, but without having without having gone, gone uh, to that, to, to the lived, living significance of that. Uh, but, it's, it's, but it's important to, to understand that consciousness is not trying to fix a feeling. It's not trying to feel better. It's not trying to get rid of depression. There is nothing wrong with working on getting rid of depression or working on anger or working on envy. But that's, that's more on the psychological realm. This is more for the body-mind realm. Consciousness is not trying to fix anything because there is nothing outside of itself. Any, any other questions? Hello, Emmanuel. I see, I see your comment in the chat box. You say, Hola, Megdi. How can I surrender about the situations that trigger the sense of separation and the restlessness that comes with it? Uh, the specific situation is about relationships, sex, and seduction. This aspect takes a lot of energy and attention from me, and it constantly pulls my attention away from contemplation. Okay, uh, so Emmanuel, you ask how can I surrender about the situations that trigger the sense of separation and restlessness? <clears throat> Now the, the restlessness, and you have to uh, look at that within yourself, Emmanuel, to come to clarity for yourself uh, about it. The restlessness and the sense of separation is a form of resistance. So it's like there is something that's arising, some thoughts or some sensations, and we are resisting or there are some images or some sensations or some experiences that we are seeking. So there is this tendency within thinking and within feeling to block, to resist or to pursue. So there are images sometimes that we are, we, we, we want to maintain them because we are seeking a certain experience. And Sometimes there are images and sensations and feelings that arise that we want to block, we don't want them. So the sense of separation and unhappiness comes from that. It's important to understand a couple of things. First, that that process is a process that we can notice. It is possible to notice this process. And it is possible also to understand that the further along you go with this process, the thicker 
things get. It's like walking deeper and deeper into the mud. Um, it's also, it may be helpful to also understand that, that what we are, what we are trying to do when we are seeking a certain experience or when we are resisting a certain experience is that we are, we are seeking happiness. We're looking for happiness. We feel that if we get this experience, we will be happy. Or if we resist this experience, this other experience, we will be happy. So we are seeking happiness, but we are seeking happiness via a certain activity. And because we are seeking happiness within a certain activity, we are postponing it. Because an activity implies time. And because we are engaged in certain activity, whether it's resisting or seeking, we are we're unaware that we're postponing happiness. That supposedly we are seeking, but we're postponing it. So happiness is more, as, is more available as you relax as being. You relax into being. Relaxing into being requires a certain vulnerability because when you're relaxing into being oftentimes we are relaxing into being in the midst in the midst of the mind who is saying no follow me let's pursue a certain experience so there is the pull of the mind that's saying let's pursue a certain experience or let's resist what is happening and at the same time the teaching is saying relax into being so in order to relax into being you have to allow and invite this uh, uh, the mind that is pulling or in, is interesting in interested in for you to follow to pursue something you have to invite the mind to the peace table you tell the man, it's okay, I'm okay, I agree with you, we need to pursue this experience. But let's take a break now, let's just hang out now, let's just rest as being right now. <laughs> the mind won't like that too much, but you know, consciousness is Lord. You have the power as consciousness, as the self, as truth, to invite the mind to the stillness, to the peace of being. It may take some time to for that process to sink in more and more. Now, you need to understand some things about relationships, sex, and seduction. Oftentimes, we are seeking a certain experience in order to avoid being. Being is, has no object to it. It is non-objective. It is fulfillment, freedom from form. It's the greatest fulfillment. It's referred to as ananda. Being is fulfillment. But the mind says, no, no, we don't want that. We want to experience something. Let's experience something. So it's a form of movement, moving away from being. This is how thought maintains itself. The thinking process maintains itself via the feelings. It comes and makes you feel that, oh, yes, I am missing this experience. I need to feel it. 
I need to feel this experience, this sexual experience, this sensual experience, this, this seductive experience. This, I need to experience something. And that is happiness, beautiful, that's love. And it's true that in the sexual encounter, there is love, there is a moment of complete freedom where there's the solution of the me and the you in the, in the, in the, uh, the sexual encounter. We dissolve as one. There is no me and you in love. But that still has an objective dimension to it. There is still a form. It is possible to celebrate love in relationship, but not when love comes from the relationship. Love does not come from the relationship. Love comes to the relationship. It's, it expresses itself as a relationship, but it does not come from the relationship. So when you are looking for love, for happiness in a relationship, you are looking in the wrong direction because you are objectifying yourself, you're objectifying the other, and you're turning love into an experience. So, these thoughts and emotions that arise for you, they arise as sensations and as perceptions. And the power that they have is the power that you give them. Meaning, you go along, you say, yeah, I want that. So, because you say, yes, I want that, they become powerful. They pull your attention. They, they, you are giving them your attention. But notice that the sexual energy is a sensory realm. It's a sensation. There are sensations arising within the body, plus images. And a story, a me story. Oh, if I could be with her. Oh, if I could have this relationship. Ah, I would be, you know, I remember, for example, my relationship from two years ago with this beautiful person. We had such wonderful time. There are images. Memories are images. And we, we keep, uh, you know, like filling the tank. We keep fueling those images. And as we fuel those images, they continue to operate. It's important for you to notice that they are just perceptions and sensations. True love can express itself as everything, as relationship, as a sexual encounter, as enjoying a meal, as being with a friend, having conversation with a friend, as enjoying a walk in the park. But it does not depend on any of that. Like the sunlight shines onto everything. It shines on the surface of the lake, but it does not require the lake, the surface of the lake in order to shine. Okay, Manuel. Any questions?
Hello, Foz. You write, I am sick. I'm feeling physical pain the whole day. It affects my level of energy, feelings. It takes down my self-esteem. How to deal with disease? First of all, Foz, uh, I am sorry that you are feeling physical pain and uh, that you are not feeling well. Uh, and I do hope that you are getting uh, a proper care, uh, medical care or, or whatever care that, you know, is appropriate to your situation. This is very important. If we have to take care of the body the best we can, but the body sooner or later is, uh, uh, is, is bound to, um, let's say, change, maybe deteriorate. <laughs> uh, and yes, it's, it's true that when the body is, uh, is feeling uh, uh, some illness or not so healthy that the uh, experience of the world and of the mind and of the body is uh, more sluggish, more uh, less sharp. But you, you talk about self-esteem, it takes down my self-esteem. The, the situation of the body takes down your self-esteem when you are uh, identified as the body force. Uh, you are not the body. The body is an experience you are having it appears to you, it appears to you in so many different ways and in, in, the, in deep sleep it's not even there. And it keeps changing the way it appears to you, it appears to you as sensations, it appears to you as images, it appears to you as thoughts, it appears to you as feelings. So the body is something that appears to you. You are, you are not the body, you are the aware presence, you are the awareness, you are not the form that appears to you. You can perceive an oak tree in the yard, but you are not the oak tree. You can perceive the snowstorm, but you are not the snowstorm. You can perceive a thought, but you are not the thought. You can perceive a bodily sensation, but you are not the bodily sensation. You are that which is, you are the reality of being, which we refer to as awareness, aware presence, which is not personal. Awareness or consciousness is not personal. So the self-esteem, you need to pay attention to your identification with the body. You feel maybe, or you perceive, or you think you are the body, or you are worried about other people perceiving your body as, as being you. Don't worry so much about what you think other people are perceiving. That's just, that's just, images within your own mind. And be watchful of uh, identifying yourself with the body to, to define yourself with a body. Don't, don't define yourself. The more you define yourself, the more issues you will have. Because even if you define yourself in a very nice way, then later on that very nice definition may change because situations change and then you have to redefine yourself again or you have to keep propping up your image. You are not a bundle of images. A bundle of images appear to you. You are no, you're not an image or a bundle of images. And whatever uh, experiences we have. In your case, you're speaking about the, 
body being having some pain, having pain and disease. Other body minds have different challenges. This is quite a challenge for you. I can tell. Other body minds have different challenges. We each have challenges in our body mind experience, and they, sometimes they are chronic. Sometimes they keep changing, uh, and it's part of the design. This there is no. There are not mistakes. It's not a mistake. So what's meant for you to work with. Uh, you may find it's a blessing for you to have this sort of situation where it may help you to free yourself from the image of I am the body, which is the cause, the deep cause of our uh, suffering and unhappiness that I am this person, this bundle of images and thoughts that are maintained day after day, day after day. Uh, so don't, it, it's okay, whatever is unfolding for you, do your best with the body, of course, to give it ease from pain, which is important, and to, give it whatever remedies it needs, it best you can. But above all, come to the understanding of what you truly are, that you are not the body, that you are aware presence. And this aware presence has no name and no age, it's not called fuzz, it's not born. It does not reside inside any container. It is not inside the body or outside the body or to the right of the body or above the body or behind the body. Awareness is universal and I is this. I is awareness. I, when you say I, if you mean the body, you're making a mistake. I is awareness, is aware presence. And I do hope that uh, things will ease up for you with the body, with the disease. Any questions? Hmm. You're welcome first. Hey, Mark D. Hello, Eric. How are you? Nice to see you, Eric. You too. Hello. <laughs> um, during the meditation, you were mentioning, you were mentioning all the things that we are not, uh, which is nice. Um, one thing you mentioned was not intending or having no intention. <laughs> and uh, it seems to me that there's, and maybe it's because as long as there's any remnant of feeling or thinking of being human and being separate, that there's some kind of intention. It seems very... Uh, not real to say have no intention that there's always going to be an intention although i understand you're kind of pointing in the direction of of that um so i was contemplating that it part part of it too is um going to some of laura's she's starting to do these little intention classes no uh -huh. no oh, okay <laughs> kind of, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, Lester Levinson, she's in that vein. Yes, yes. Uh, which can be useful, you know? I mean, it's, it's about being really honest about uh, 
where you're coming from. And she often has a very direct approach is, you know, what's your intention right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's like there's unconscious yes. things going on that you're not even aware of. Yes. So uh, anyway, I just thought I would, uh, I would bring that up and kind of explore it a little. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, please say hello to Laura. <laughs> You know when you see her. Um, yeah, you know, uh, when we are looking at the ocean, we may be looking at the ocean from many different positions in many different places. So it's, uh, there are, you know, different contemplations, different pointers that, that uh, are significant and they, they resonate in, uh, in various in various ways, sometimes they don't resonate at all, <laughs> but maybe not so obviously. Maybe it takes some time. Um, so yes, uh, one could you know take a close look at what is your intention. What is it that really, really, really matters right now? What is it that is it some experience that you want to experience something just to to come to clarity yes to come to clarity within yourself which is sort of a, an inner honesty or an inner uh, inner transparency with yourself what is your intent yeah. you know we we may come to meetings i remember i used to go to these Krishnamurti meetings decades ago uh, out here, you know, in this area. And, and uh, I had, I was noticing that, that I had sort of a mixture of intentions. I wanted to be with friends, you know, that share the same uh, love for truth, but I also, uh, wanted to enjoy the social there was a social <laughs> aspect to it you know <laughs> and so it, it was yes okay so there was and and then there were other intentions which uh, i don't want to talk about them now but um yes uh so um absolutely i think you know a lot of stuff we uh we don't see about ourselves so when we that what you just shared what Laura and Levinson about what is your intention is a good uh, 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 sadhana or practice or exercise. Uh, so in the meditation, you know, uh, I invite uh, sort of in a different direction <laughs> to sort of relax if there is an intention to welcome it, allow it, recognize it, whatever thoughts arise, whatever sensation arise, just sort of not to deny. It's very important uh, to, to welcome whatever is arising, even you don't need to understand it. We don't, sometimes we're thinking too much about what is it that is arising. I'm not sure that, you know, it's okay, that's okay too. Okay, to it. even if we don't know what we are welcoming, <laughs> just to be welcoming, to be welcoming. But yes, I did not uh, mean uh, that we are necessarily free of personal intention or even there may be an intention that is love, you know, sometimes our intentions that are sort of coming through us, you know, it's like 
I, I have a feeling that we get together in satsang because there are intentions that are flowing through us, intention to, which is a love for truth. I mean, one could say that's, that's an intention, but it's more like, it seems to be personal, but it's bigger than personal. You, you know what I mean? By uh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like, yes, it is. I can acknowledge it, but I can also acknowledge that it's, it's sort of, I'm not creating it, and it's sort of coming through me. Maybe, yeah, you, maybe you may notice it later. It. Huh? You may notice it later. Like, yeah. wow, wow, what happened, or how did I get happy there? I don't even know. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it could be that all intentions are in their, in their deepest way in, impersonal. And that then there is sort of the personal narrative that is added on, this sort of tacked on them. <laughs> that is, it's, um, I'm the doer. But no, uh, yes, I appreciate what, what, you, uh, what you shared, Eric. I, 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 I did not mean, um, I did not mean it otherwise. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, clarifying and, and also uh, very germane what you said about the clarity and um, being honest about what's actually there. Yes. And it pertains to the earlier question about relationships and um, sex and seduction and so forth, um, because if we have an intention that is not entirely conscious or not entirely clear, other people can pick that up, can feel yes. that. Right. They can feel that it, it, this isn't really about love. Yes. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yes, we, I, I think in relationships often that's the With case. the mix, you know. Yeah. yeah, where we objectify the other, uh, it, it, you know, it's sort of, our relationship becomes, by what I'm, what I'm getting, or what can I get, and then it becomes images, sets of mm -hmm. images, and and uh, images separate us. You know, when we have an image of our partner, or what I can get, or what I need to defend, uh, it, the, then then it becomes the, the relationship starts to become more. Uh, how are we dealing with each other? <laughs> Uh, I find that uh, I could say that my intention in the relationship is not to objectify the other, not to objectify, of course, myself simultaneously, because if you objectify, objectify myself in a way, uh, the other is also objectified. So to be really watchful of that, you know, that, that it's, a, it's easy to say it in words, but in terms of the dynamic of it, it, uh, it's, it's sort of, it's embracing, it's embracing everything uh, and noticing sort of the tendencies. I mean, there are tendencies that are all yeah. of, uh, yeah. of wanting to please or, or, or wanting to be pleased or yes, exactly. not wanting to get hurt. And, and it's so, ripe territory for yeah. uh, growth. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yes. also I find the tendency to focus on the other and fortunately, I have a partner who will say, focus on yourself, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I, it's so easy to see patterns or tendencies in, another, in, a, yes. in what we, you know, it's our mind projecting. Yes. Or whatever. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's always about, it's always about the self. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I, I notice that that to avoid sort of simply being with what's happening within within this body mind space 
I want to put it out. And so it's like, it's about you, you know, you, you know, you know, the, to sort of notice that tendency and it's, uh, it's a resistance to being resistance to being and um, mm -hmm. over time I've come to see that that it is within being itself that that love is somehow shines you know it shines from from being which includes whatever whatever may be manifesting you know it, within my feeling state you know sort of to to be with that and and it's interesting it's like there is a being with what is manifesting at the feeling level that that cannot uh, formulate the, or that does not formulate it it's just a being at the sensory level it's not it doesn't it hasn't formulated it as a a story or a thought or a concept is sort of at the raw sensory level. And uh, uh, all, all experiences that, that we have uh, can be uh, sort of brought to the sensory realm. a neutral space where uh, where, where silence silence resides where where everything sort of comes to to that silent presence. If, if I'm understanding, if I'm understanding what you're pointing to, um, it's like the experience right now. I'm, I'm hearing a bird, a bird outside singing, and without any kind of interpretation or concept, I'm just kind of letting that flow through uh you know it's it's very lovely and i couldn't really pin anything on it as to define it uh it's just it is what it is and you brought this up in in when in the context of talking about a relationship and i guess that that's can be more challenging because it seems like there's so much going on and it's bringing up things from the past or unconsciously yes so it takes a lot of attention <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> but it gets easier i guess it's... yes yes and also you know when we when you are listening to the bird and 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 there is no bird and there is no, no one listening to the bird. It's just a listening. Yeah, it's not really out there. There's just a, just this sound vibration somewhere or nowhere. Yeah, it's, it, it sort of stills it stills the mind to to it, it, it's it can come to the complete stillness of the mind and 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 the savoring is no longer the savoring of the sound of the bird it's the savoring of mm. we could say savoring of being savoring you could say the self savoring itself yeah it's yeah. no longer it's no longer a bird 
And in a way, yes, one could say, you know, from the mind's perspective, it's like, oh, it's a totally different matter, totally different thing when you're in a relationship. But uh, so we invite ourselves to bring in that quality of, let's say that quality of experiencing. We invite ourselves to bring that quality of experiencing to uh, a certain feeling. Because it, if we're not, when you come to the feeling like you come to the sound of the bird with that, 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 that complete listening, then there is no more a bird, there is no more feeling, it's, it's, there is just a listening. Yeah, it's like a, a, an openness. There's just the this, this space. It's like, wow, I don't know what this is. And yes. That's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> yes, and right. And uh, I know that from a distance, yeah. from a distance, you know, the mind sometimes is convinced. It says, oh, no, yeah, well, you can do that with a bird, but forget about, you know, being in a relationship. But uh i don't i don't think so i I'm, I'm wary of when the mind says that when there is that thought oh yeah it's easy to do it with a bird but it's a different thing in life it's, that's no. true that's true it's just the it's just memories of different aspects but in the moment it's just there's just this one yeah right now there's just one thing right going on and right and so like, you think you know but you you don't right right so so the the invitation is okay you know let's 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 say yes to giving it a try you know let's say yes to exploring that possibility in relationship you know sooner or later we have to bring it to our life you know not just to listening to the bird you know we have to bring it to to whatever is happening in our life, our work, yeah. our challenges. Yeah, it has to be true. No matter, yeah. No matter yeah. what you're doing, right. working in business or... Right, because we don't live our lives just listening to the birds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it is. <laughs> right, maybe, maybe we, we are listening to different birds. Maybe we are all birds. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yes, <laughs> Eric, nice talking to you, Eric. So if there are any questions. Hi, Meg G. It's Esther. Esther. Hello, Esther. Hi there. <laughs> um, Hello. Would you, would you talk about boredom, uh, the, boredom. Signif the significance of it, and, and what, to, what to do about it exactly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks. Yes. See, Esther, you see, we don't exist in time. Time is is a, a thought, mind, impression. Time is. Cementation. It's 
actually, there is no time. <laughs> We don't exist in time. But when we exist in time, there is a long stream. I'm going from here to there over time. See? And I have to do something with my time. <laughs> I've got to fill my time. <laughs> I have to find meaningful activities. Throughout my days, 24 hours. And it's only January. Oh my God, I've got 12 more months. <laughs> <laughs> and the older you get, the more <laughs> it, it becomes a sadhana, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, notice just. Being presence, which notices itself, I being presence. I don't need to do anything. The body may need some activity. So we take the body for a walk. The body needs some social interaction, so we join a club or we invite friends over or go visit friends. But I, I, aware presence, it's a different, different matter altogether. I am not in time needing time, requiring time. I don't necessitate, necessitate time. And time is activity. Time is mental, is mentation. So activity is mentation. Because time is activity. Activity requires time, is made out of time. And time and activities are mentation. So, when you are watching a movie, the movie may take 30 years because uh, it's the movie about the young boy who was 40 years old and at 70 years he died. So you watch the movie and the movie took 30 years. But in fact, no. You were the movie only lasted one hour as a metaphor, you know. So, the time that appears to you in the movie is just a part of the images on the screen. But as long as you uh, mistake yourself to be somebody in the movie then you are subject to time. Time and events and circumstances and situations and good activities and bad activities, successes and failures. You follow? Yes, very much. So boredom are, is a result of thoughts and of course sensations and feelings about me and time, me and time and activities. Me, time and activities, activities, meaningful activities, non-meaningful meaningful activities, good activities, useful activities, helpful activities, etc. Which is all mentation. It is mentation. Yes? It's mentation. We never leave ourselves. 
we are never somewhere else in space. We are never some time else in time. We are never in place or time as, as what we truly are. On the other hand, on the other hand, Santa Claus is busy uh, buying all the parts that he needs from the market in order to make all the toys which he has to deliver on December the 25th or the 24th. Well, I don't know which day it is that they deliver. He does a delivery, you see. So that applies to Santa Claus. Santa Claus is very busy in time and space because he has to make the deliveries of all these different uh, homes all over planet Earth. Now, Having said that, I don't want to uh, deny feeling that arise that we, that we meaning that thought, thinking refers to as boredom. When boredom arises, it arises as thinking and as feeling. You think it says, oh, I'm bored, what am I doing? It's been three hours, I'm sitting here, and about what I'm, you know, I'm just, just going to be doing something else. And so yesterday, it says, and tomorrow, it's like 1920, 2021. So there is thinking, you know, I'm bored. Oh, when will I, whatever. So there is thinking, and there is feeling, thinking and feeling. Now, feeling is when you go to feeling, you turn your attention because we don't know, we don't want to deny, we don't want to have a pseudo uh, non duality where oh, there is no time, there is no space. So, we are feeling, we're feeling something. So, we go there, we say, okay, so let's let's feel it, let us feel it, let's feel it a hundred percent, let's welcome this feeling. Let's, here I am. I'm no longer bored. I am welcoming this feeling. <laughs> so the solution to the boredom, here it is. Welcome the feeling. You want an activity? Here is the activity. <laughs> welcoming. But it's a welcoming where you are not the welcomer. You are welcoming itself. You are the welcoming itself. You are not a welcomer, a subject and an object. You are the welcoming, and the welcoming and the feeling are one. So it's, it's a welcoming, which does not have a welcomer, that's welcoming something in order to. No. Welcoming is what I am. I am in this welcoming space, is feeling, okay. Full, full feeling, full feeling, fulfilling. Oh, fulfilling feeling, <laughs> full feeling, full feeling, fulfilling, full feeling. <laughs> so, full feeling, yeah, and that takes you to what you truly are, then doesn't take you are that. It reveals to you, reveals to you that, that I am. And it's, uh, yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks. Yes. With me, it's more of a, a feeling more than a thought. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. and, I, and I know that it's, it's a feeling like any other mm -hmm. and be dealt with like any other to welcome. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's just, 
um, being patient with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you're patient with it, yes, and also savor it. You know how your favorite meal or your favorite your favorite thing, you know, your favorite time that you savor. Savor it. Savor that. Explore the savoring of that. Not to force yourself to savor, but explore that possibility. There is the unexpected there. Thank you. Okay, Esther. Okay, well, thank you all for your lovely company and your presence. Thank you, Kelly and Eric, lovely to see you and Esther, and Fox, and George, and John, and whoever I missed, whoever, Joe, whoever I oh. met. I'm sorry, thank you all. Very lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Eric, say hello to Laura. Thank you all.